Welcome to video 7 in our van build series. Today we're going to make a do-it-yourself simple shower pan for our van. It will be small, approximately 17 and a half inches by 27 inches with 5 inch sides. We're planning on using, number one, we're going to need to buy a sink drain, about 42 bucks. We will repurpose some 3 quarter inch plywood. We're going to buy a small piece of 1 quarter inch birch plywood about 20 bucks. We will need some wood glue, about 10 bucks, a few Craig one and a quarter inch pocket screws, about a buck, one can of Flex Seal liquid rubber, 20 bucks, and one tennis ball. Whoa, 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 a tennis ball? Yep. Now you gotta watch. Before we could make our shower pan, we had to determine the precise location of the drain. This involved climbing under the van to take a look at the ladder frame structure and then choose a suitable location. Well, we have a hole. Well, kind of committed. This van had a previous life. We wanted to ensure any exposed metal was addressed prior to covering it with a shower pan. In its previous life, thankfully, the contractor had three-quarter inch plywood protecting the floor. I have removed that plywood and plan on reusing it for some of our construction. That's what I'm using here. Okay, I want to flip it over and finish it from the other side. When selecting your drain, make sure you choose one without an overflow. So I'll really tighten that down. We'll be able to pull it pretty darn tight to create a little bit of a... Even though it says don't over tighten. Is that what it says? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, any suggestions? I could go to a thinner material. What did that guy use? I forget. One quarter inch. And what's this? One quarter inch. With the nine inch relief hole cut in the three quarter inch plywood, I thought the one quarter inch birch would be pliable enough. Nope. Time to add a little persuasion. Told you I needed a tennis ball. So what are your thoughts? I think it's dented. <laughs> so maybe it'll work? Maybe it will. Okay, so we'll come back and how many days do we leave it, do you think? Okay, that's toast. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, that is fantastic. Man, that could not have worked better. With the base board nicely deformed, time to start on the shower pan walls. If you haven't used a Craig pocket hole jig, add it to your Christmas wish list. The Craig system is an amazing fastening system that enables screws to be inserted across the grain, making their connections significantly stronger. 
gluing and screwing the joints together prevents gaps from forming as wood shrinks and expands with temperature and moisture. It's a must do for this application. Craig screws are self-tapping and have a wide washer head to prevent screwing too far into the material. Okay, time to install the pocket hole plugs. Okay, now these are too long. How do I make this fit? How do I shorten 25 plugs? Well, let's try setting up a cutting jig on the radial arm saw. That didn't work. What about using a an orbital sander? Okay, that is going to take way too long, and uh, I got 25 to do. I got to come up with another plan. How about using a grinding wheel? Oh, well, that works. Well, here I am inserting the pocket plugs. They are not the correct plugs for this project. The plugs are oak and the plywood is recycled, but I am using what I have on hand. And in the end, you won't see any of this. The entire shower pan is going to be covered with liquid rubber. Here I'm using a half inch radius rounding bit on the router, just to take the sharp edges off the plywood. A few of the edges needed a little adjustment prior to sanding. Well, the first uh, bit of sanding is done. Um, I'm quite impressed how this came out. If I was to do this over, I wouldn't use recycled plywood. This is uh, just a sign of uh, plywood that uh, obviously has had a life and it's going to take more time um, from me in order to uh, use a plastic wood filler to bring this back to an area where it's you know just about ready to uh, cover in liquid rubber. Uh, these came out extremely well. A little bit of filler will uh, fill up the small little voids. Again, uh, take a look at the, uh, the roughness and the grain here. Very smooth down there, but a little bit of filler will look after it. Okay, I want to use a little inside corner molding to ensure water doesn't collect against the sides of the plywood. I don't have any handy, so I'll quickly make some from a scrap piece of spruce. I use DAP Alex Flex, a premium molding and trim sealant designed for a crack proof seal. I wanted to fill in any cracks in the wood prior to applying the Flex Seal product. Okay, that's probably way too much. 
Okay, I should be using some of this excess to fill those nail holes. All right, I got excess over here. Fill in that. That's not enough there, I don't think. Well, I think, I think that's done. Big Logan had the idea of taping up the drain so we could build up the flex seal around and smooth around it to provide the water an unobstructed smooth path. I wanted to do the same, but it's minus 25 Celsius here, minus 13 Fahrenheit, so I'm currently not working in the van. I'm working in our basement. So I'm going to apply the flex seal with the drain removed when the flex seal dries, I'll install the shower base in the van, and when warmer weather reaches us, I'll add one more final coat of self-leveling flex seal to fill in this tiny ridge around the drain. Applying the flex seal wasn't overly cumbersome. I have worked with worse. Let's see what it does. Ooh, that's thick. I have seen others roll it on. I ended up using a throwaway foam brush and wore one brush out two-thirds of the way through the first coat. So it might be an idea to have a spare brush on hand. It took me 25 minutes to apply the first coat. I also sat and watched it for several minutes after, hoping to get at least some of the runs. With the shower pan finished and the flex seal fairly cured, we can now install it. Here I'm ensuring that I have tape on the face of the drain, but the edges are left bare to ensure the flex seal liquid rubber can self-level right up against the drain edge. To be clear, this is not to prevent the shower pan from leaking. That's already been looked after with the two coats of flex seal liquid rubber and the rubber gasket on the drain itself. This last little touch is just to remove the chance of any water pooling next to the drain lip. Videos make everything look easy. This actually took a fair bit of time and was fairly awkward working in the limited space. I have this drain installed and I've removed the uh, extension pipe here. Okay, I'm not installing this right now. I'll be cutting this to, uh, to length at a later date, but I wanted to show exactly where it is and essentially where I'm going to be putting the uh, the gray water tank which is right over here so that's going to be coming up in a later video and I'll be cutting this down to size and running the piping and so forth as I shared earlier here I am adding the final bead of flex seal around the drain to build this area up 1 16th of an inch since this product is self leveling when it does dry, it should be almost flat. Boy, that looks good. Yeah, I'll leave that down. That's awesome. That is just awesome.